John Lahr, in terms of culture and, and society, and sort of the way that a comedian can really change our world, why, why do you think that, that Bill Hicks still matters so much? I think what he did, which was so unique, is he actually fought on his feet. He, he worked with an audience to find an idea. He didn't necessarily always come out with an idea to tell the audience. He found the idea with the audience, which is the ultimate kind of creative maneuver, right? And his frustration when I met him was that he couldn't find the audience. They were, he couldn't make them listen. And I, to speak to the point directly about the comedy that you're talking about, and we all approve of, saying the unsayable, which is very hard to do in this culture. Uh, the point is really well made at this moment in history because we are living in and seeing and living through a, a culture in terror. And when you are afraid, you don't want to think. You want black and white, you want it to go away. And uh, what we are seeing politically and socially is a refusal to think. And the job of a comedian of his quality, or any great comedian, <coughs> is to stimulate thought. And in doing that, in, in the stimulating of thought, in making people make connections and think outside the box, essentially it's an act of counterterrorism. It's a way of giving people courage. And uh, that's the honor of the craft and the point of the craft. And I should say, having grown up uh, in the household of a great comedian, it's something in there, it's a unique thing in their DNA. It's not like you can actually, you can learn technically how to deliver a joke. You can't learn how to be a maverick and how to take something on. That is something to do with an essential, I, I think it's to do with revenge, but uh, aggression, whatever you want to say. Basically, when you come down to it, psychologically, as we know from any comedian who goes on stage, what do they say when, if, you, if you've done well? You know, did you, I, I knocked him dead, I killed him, I slaughtered him. The whole business is about murder. That's what the, if you're murdering ideas, you're not, you, you are, it's, a, it's about aggression, it's about symbolic aggression and killing the things that you psychically impress you. It's infantile, of course. But the great thing is, as we know from, uh, even if we haven't read our foreway, that in order to survive in a civilized society, we have to repress a lot of our infantile, aggressive feelings. And we pay comedians a lot of money to express those things articulately for us. That's why we laugh so much. And what he's saying there is what, um, um, it, because it's really about, it's really like, uh, I don't, this is probably a bad example, but it's like uh, Christ in the, in the, in the, in the, with the money changers. He's essentially he's wanting to kick over a, a capital society. Not pretty likely, but it's the expression of that impulse and the connection of that impulse with audiences who know that their lives are driven crazy by the lust that advertising creates. In them. That that's why they're Satan sworn, and they and they name it. And uh, to, 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 comically, why this is all across the board, all artists, not just comedians, but the whole point of why we go to artists and why we 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 look to them for clues of survival is that life is painful. Pain is not articulate. And the great artists name our pain. That's what Ben did. The idea of telling the truth to an audience, the, the really great comedians are, are on a kind of personal little mission. I mean, they all had a little messianic thing going there. I mean, uh, you know, there was a way in which he felt he was enlightened and wanted to enlighten other people. And whatever, it, you know, he, he did it through why he was persuasive in in getting across and why comedy is persuasive is that it, it, is, uh, it, it leads through joy. In other words, it instructs through pleasure, not through reason. And, uh, and that, was his, that was his gift. But the ones who are really great, who must speak their mind, the gift is, this, is the freedom to say what you feel and making people, uh, finding a way to make people hear it. That's, that's Lenny Bruce or uh, in a way, 
Woody Allen up to a point, uh, and certainly Nicholson May, people like that, you know, subversive, but in very varying degrees of commercial cunning, you know, very very degrees. And, and the thing about, uh, as we say in England, uh, it was a Bill was just balls out. I mean, that, 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 that and that was the shock. That was like, my God, he's going to sit. He's, he's not going. He's not. He is. And then when he played uh, in London. When I went to see him the first time to do a New Yorker piece, people were standing three deep at the Dominion Theater, which is a 2,000 seat theater, to see him. There was no doubt that this guy was huge and was saying something that people wanted to hear. And I think they were a lot of what Bill, and Bill knew he was great. Uh, he knew. I mean, and what he was bewildered by was that he couldn't get across to an American audience for various reasons. But one of the things that I was thinking when I, I heard that last segment was that, you know, they're all, uh, in the pattern of jokes, in the in joke telling, as you, as you said, there's a great skill in in, in that, and it's a really wonderful and rare talent to write a joke. I mean, it's the best and most minimalist kind of haiku writing you can do. But having said that, a lot of the jokes, if, let's say Woody Allen, how can I find meaning in a finite universe given my shirt and waist size? <laughs> it, 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 it's, a, it's, it's, it's a good, funny joke, but if you follow the trajectory of it, it just leads you back to him. It doesn't lead you to the world at all. It doesn't enter, engage with the world at all. It's simply a way of setting up his particular persona. And he's made it, uh, you know, he's a genius at doing it. But what's great about the trajectory of Bill's jokes is that you follow it in the payoff, like the coke business, leads you to something higher. It makes you, the, the audience, engage with the world and see something that they didn't know was there before. So it factors out in a completely um, illuminating way. I would say that the Bill is on a line of wit that is essential to uh, in, anybody who studies American culture and follows who writes about it. Comedy knows how rare his gift was and what he contributed. And you know, we now are really interested, and we finally got a little political humor uh, on uh, American television. John Stewart uh, would not exist were it not for Bill and Maher. The, the fact is that he is for he's a comedian's comedian. People like Stewart look to him as the, the, the pure light, where it started, in a way. Uh, and, and so he he goes on. He goes on in other comedians, and his work is here. It's not going away. It will only, people will find it, it will grow, and he is part of the, the <clears throat> weave of what we look back on as the 20th century comic tradition. Undoubtedly.